Is it really possible that Luka Doncic can become the greatest player of all time one day? Is there any point in even having that discussion? A question many have asked, and my answer is, what other 23-year-old in the history of Earth has ever made four first-team All-NBA appearances? The answer is none other than Luka Doncic. Michael Jordan made his first first-team All-NBA appearance at the age of 23. Diving even further, making All-NBA first-team at the age of 23 or younger has only happened 57 times total in NBA history. And again, Luca owns four of those times himself, which is the most ever. The only other two players to make first team all NBA three times before the age of 24, according to basketball reference post merger were Tim Duncan and Kevin Durant, who both had three selections, which tells us one thing with the second highest MVP odds only behind Nikola Jokic, Luka Doncic can certainly still become a top 10 player to ever play the game and no matter what anyone says with the success he has already put out into the world the resume is actually very much there for Luca to still potentially become the NBA's GOAT. We know this story is an old and proven one. It is winning that cures all. Just one second ago, Nikola Jokic was an analytic MVP darling, and now he is seen as a proven battle-tested champion. It is winning that flips the narrative, and when we consider that recently, Luca has lost 10 to 15 pounds. We can write those pounds off as yet another weight loss transformation type deal. Or we can listen to his words or the words of those around him who know that the determination to not sit at home during the playoffs ever again has been lit in him. With that fire, we have seen body transformations and incredible international play from both Nikola Jokic and Giannis, who also both use those levels of play to obtain the two ultimate prizes in the NBA, the most valuable player trophy and the Larry O. B. So what's up guys, Mike here, and yes, today we are talking Luca. The man is skinny, and I am telling you that weight is not coming off. But also, we are going to break down the apex, the top eight years of every single GOAT contender in basketball. Trust me when I say this is an incredibly fun video. A lot of research went into this, but also, before that, I am very excited to say we are bringing back what ifs in an incredibly awesome way. As we work on our current major one, if you are a fan of the old second channel, I know you're going going to love this. On Coors Light, we just started a brand new series with what if Victor Wembanyama was in LeBron James 2003 draft class. That of course also includes Chris Bosh, Dwayne Wade, Carmelo Anthony. Trust me when I say the video is awesome. All of my creative energy is going into that series. I would love and very much appreciate if you checked it out, if you gave honest feedback in the comment section and you subscribed if you thought the content was great. That's all I'm asking for in that way. And with that said, let's talk about Luke. Because sometimes in life, you do need a wake-up call. And last year, after coming into camp 30 pounds overweight and being called out by Mark Cuban, his owner, publicly, Luca himself admitted that that was incredibly embarrassing. 30 pounds over his playing weight. But in a world where players are hiding in Oregon and having way too much fun on Instagram Live, I'll say I can believe in one of the most feared competitors in the league finally understanding that if his body is right, there is going to be no stopping him especially after he has been, uh, can we say, shamed on this level? But the thing is, in order to actually become the NBA's GOAT, which Luka does have a chance to do. I know he's never been to the NBA Finals. I know he's never won an MVP. What I also know is this. Luka Doncic is the only player in the current NBA who has actually built up a resume that is on the cusp of being GOAT ready. The thing is though, if he is going to be the GOAT, he needs to start moving now. As you're about to see, when it comes to the greatest of all time in the NBA, it is years six through 13 that matter the most. That eight year span is the absolute apex of a player's career. But first, I want to cement the argument for Luca as a young GOAT type player. Because I have seen the comments saying, why even talk about this, right? Well, when it comes to the best young players in NBA history, Luca can make an argument that he is the literal best to ever do it. Now I know that's a huge statement and people might be angry at that. But I'm talking about just individual success and talent. In terms of team success, Magic Johnson 
Johnson as a rookie has no competition at all. NBA Finals MVP as a rookie. However, if we compare the stat lines of a 20 year old Magic Johnson and Luka Doncic, this is not discounting Magic at all. It is just very clear that Luka has better stats by a very large margin. And it is also very fair to point out that Magic had Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and a prime Jamal Wilkes. That is two prime Hall of Famers. When Luka was 20, he was playing with a mad, but he still won't admit it, Kristaps Porzingis and Tim Hardaway Jr. as his second and third guys. Not exactly the same talent level, and we know young players cannot control where they play. By year six though, if they do want to force their way out, they can at least start to plot to do so. And throughout NBA history, from year six to year 13, the top three to ever do it, Michael Jordan, LeBron James, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, the three undisputed goats of the post-merger era, dominated. It is in their apex where they set themselves apart in the goat race. But in order to find out what Luka needs to do to jump into this goat race, we are actually going to turn things around and look at the eight players who were almost in the top three of all time, players who were on the way to possibly even becoming the goat, but for whatever reason, their career resumes fell short. We are going to look at the failures of what I will call this excluded eight, the eight players in the post-merger era who actually had a chance to be the GOAT. And we are seeing on this chart exactly where they went wrong. Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, Tim Duncan, Dwayne Wade. As you could see with these eight names, everyone has at least one fatal flaw. Right away, Steph has an incredible amount of titles, but only one finals MVP and only four first team all NBAs. Shaq and Duncan both won three titles each and Shaq even had three finals MVPs. He was absolutely incredible, but Shaq also only had one regular season MVP and thus just did not have the resume to be the greatest to ever play. To be the greatest, there is zero margin of error here. And we can see how important a player's apex really is. Kobe's career is actually strangely remembered because because the beginning was incredible and so was the end. It was his apex, the time when he was supposed to be at his absolute best, that was considered underwhelming. And if Kobe did have a better eight season stretch in that time period, we would be talking about him in a much higher light. Kevin Durant began his career with three first team all NBAs and a finals loss to the LeBron James led Miami Heat in his first five seasons. But after those first five seasons, it was during Durant's apex where he lost any chance to not only be the GOAT, but somehow fell behind Steph Curry in historical rankings if we were making a list. At one point in time, some people believe Kevin Durant might be the best player to ever do it. As a 25 year old, he won the MVP, but overall, during his eight most important seasons, he did not have enough individual success and not enough team success until of course he went to the Golden State Warriors. And that is no disrespect on Kevin Durant's name. And many consider Tim Duncan to be the greatest power forward to ever live. But the reason his historic resume is held back when we consider the greatest to ever actually play is that Timmy just did not have that type of individual success. LeBron James finished in the top three in MVP voting eight times in eight years. No margin of error here. Unfortunately, Tim Duncan only finishing twice in the MVP voting in those years really does say a lot. And we see that in the way we remember him. Right now, greatest power forward to ever play, but not in that GOAT conversation. And look what happened to Dwayne Wade. Recently, Wade has said this because of injury i didn't i wasn't able to get to the level that i knew i could get to my mind i was in goat level we talking about ifs you take away the injuries away i'm still playing basketball right now if i want to like you couldn't tell me in 06 07 08 that I wasn't going to where I wanted to go. Right. And that is a sad truth. Look at how much not having a tremendous apex, despite winning a championship as an early player, has impacted Dwayne Wade's legacy. In just his third season, Dwayne Wade was second team all NBA, finished sixth in the MVP voting, and then just so happened to carry the Miami Heat to an NBA championship. He was, of course, named the finals MVP after averaging 34.7 points per game. The second best player on that Heat team who beat a prime Dirk Nowitzki was Shaq who chipped in 13.2 points. 34.7 to 13.2. He was supposed to be headed to the absolute top, but then injuries come into play, a less than spectacular apex combined with a quick end to his career. And now we have Dwayne Wade needing to remind people that he was incredible. At the end of the day, it will be wildly, wildly difficult to of course top what Michael Jordan, LeBron James, and Kareem did in their apexes, but someone will be able to top Mike eventually 
closely if they can just match his apex because it is after the bulls of course where michael jordan's goat resume actually has a weakness but during his apex mike won four mvps and was top three in the mvp voting every year other than the 95 season in which he returned famously with the i'm back facts but also infamously only played in 17 games in the regular season then took his second playoff loss with the chicago bulls in the 1990s to shaq in the orlando magic in the 95 playoffs but other than that one season mike was essentially perfect kareem's case crumbles with the lack of first team all nbas and lack of finals mvps shout out magic if anything researching this video myself i'm putting magic up in my personal top four of all time i've added him here top four magic but as for lebron james in terms of individual dominance lebron was right there with mike i think lebron is the second best to ever play the game and there's nothing wrong with that statement the second best to ever do something ever but of course if i'm not saying he's the goat i'm somehow attacking him at his peak lebron with his body alone just moved top defenders out of the way on lebron's way to the basket as he then dunked on some poor poor soul lebron could also score from anywhere his passing vision was the best of the best he played the game with so much intelligence he was an athletic freak he dunked on people while also coming up with huge game saving blocks and huge moments i love lebron he's amazing i just don't think it was enough six for six speaks for itself here and we know it lebron lost too many finals and he should definitely not have lost the 2011 finals to a worse dallas mavericks team the smallest of holes in a basketball resume can destroy any chance of beating mike but luca has four first team all nbas in five seasons that is ridiculous so while there are certainly a lot of questions i will say this michael jordan got dennis rodman to play with him i do not think kyrie irving is on the level at all of dennis rodman to be honest i truly believe after watching the kyrie irving clips this summer that kyrie and luca are going to be a great tandem together if you want to see a video on kyrie irving and everything that he has done and why we should believe or not believe in him then comment down below but what i will say is i believe in luca's leadership and I believe that he is the type of personality that can take over. And I also believe that if you're coming back this skinny, everyone is respecting that you are on a mission. And that is the type of leader that other players want to play with. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. But more importantly, go check out the new Coors Light video. What if Victor Wembanyama was in LeBron James draft class? It is my favorite video that I've done in a very long time. Please go check it out. That would be awesome. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting you're awesome we all know it and as always have an awesome day and cue that music if you're still here while the music is cued here are two videos i think you are definitely going to enjoy i mean personally i think the one on the left might be more your style but the one on the right looks pretty awesome too click one let me know what you think and again have an awesome day